Good morning and praise the Lord. Amen. God is good and all the time. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Galatians 5 and verse 22, but the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Again, as such, there is no law. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have been crucified in the sinful nature with its passion and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep uh, in step with the Spirit. Amen. We are glad that you could tune in and uh, make time to join this stream today. This is Membly Baptist Online Service. Uh, this is the adult service and we are glad that you know you could make time. And also we thank God for you, uh, for he has protected you, he has kept you and watched over you even to this very day. Uh, today is Zone 5. Uh, if you're uh, a member of Zone 5, praise the Lord. Today is Zone 5 and we have had a Better Together series running for the last two months now. And this is uh, the fifth zone leading. Uh, and even the one who's sharing the word today is from Zone 5. And we pray that this service will be a blessing to you. So we want to pray together. Uh, with this wonderful team uh, and, and just give thanks to the Lord as we start this service. So join us as uh, we pray together and begin the service. Our Father and our God, the Lord of our Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you and we honor you. We humbly come to you, Lord, thanking you and uh, just glorifying your name for this far, O oh God. Lord, we count our blessing and see how much, Lord, you have just been gracious and kind to us. Lord, we thank you again for gathering us uh, as believers, Lord, to fellowship, uh, to worship you, Lord, and even to hear your word and to have communion with you, O God. So what a privilege and what a joy it is, O God. So, Father, we do not take this opportunity, Lord, for granted. So, Father, with grateful hearts, we come to worship you and to honor you. And we pray the Lord, as we do so, may your spirit work among us. Lord, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. Amen and amen. We invite you for a time of worship and adoration. So make room in your heart. You know, Raise your hands, raise your voices. Let's worship the Lord together. Yes, I will sing the wondrous 
Give the Lord a hand clap today. Amen. As we continue praising Him. So we clap our hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Even as you're seated, you can still praise the Lord. Hey. Okay, yeah. 
a shout of praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. There is none like our Jehovah. He is the beginning, He is the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the ultimate of our lives. He is the weapon of our lives. His presence is the weapon that we use in our lives. He's more than our mind can comprehend. He's more than we can ever think of. More than our minds can comprehend. More than even our words can tell him. His name is Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this morning, Lord, we choose to worship you. We choose to honor you. We choose to lift up our hands, oh God, as we cry to you, Yahweh, that from beginning of time, we confess today that, Lord, you have never failed and you will never fail. We have testified, we have seen it, and we are claiming it today the Lord you never fail you never fail Lord hallelujah mm -hmm. yeah. I will never forget all of your my days yeah. in every situation remain the same Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. I will not forget you all my days in every situation you have never felt. Join me saying Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. We lift up our hands and say Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. You're called of today, God of tomorrow, you're still the same, my very present help in the time of need, in every situation you have never failed. Oh, oh. 
forget that you're a constant help, that you're present Lord in whatever situation and circumstance we find ourselves oh God. So Lord right now, in this very hour we confess that we believe that and we cling to that truth that Lord you are with us so Father we thank you and we bless you in Jesus name we worship, we pray and we give thanks Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord with a hand clap. It's a wonderful day. Amen. He's a present help and a constant help in our time of need. Even at this very hour, He's present. He is with us. He's hearing us. And He is here with us. So God bless you for, uh, you know, joining. If you've just joined us, this is Membley Baptist uh, online service. And we invite you to a time of hearing God's word. So open your Bibles, open your hearts uh, as the Lord speak to us today. Praise God. We want to thank God for this opportunity to listen to his word. We are grateful for him being our Lord and our Savior. We are grateful for him being there for us and always ministering to our lives. And this time as we are hearing his word, we are grateful that he has gathered us here with a meal prepared for us. And so we want to take this opportunity to tell God thank you in our hearts and tell him thank you for being there for us. Amen. My name is Anne Karanja, and I'm here to um, share the word. And uh, we are grateful that we are still on the series of better, We Are Better Together. And Zone 5 today is leading. And we are grateful for what the Lord is doing amidst us. So going to the word, the Lord impressed in my heart when um, I was contemplating on what to share. That when we are still on this earth we need to understand that we are significant and so the someone title is i am significant and specifically um it is put that it is should be i am you say it in your heart i am say it in your mind i am that i'm significant the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 12, Look, I am coming soon, bringing a reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And we need to understand that our Jesus is coming soon. And before he comes, we need to continue encouraging ourselves in the Lord. We need to continue doing his work. And we understand that we are better together when we are aware and understand that, um, that we are significant. 
individually and collectively as the body of Christ. What is to be significant from the dictionary meanings? I picked out this, having a likely, uh, having or likely to influence or effect or have an effect, having or likely to have an influence or to have an effect. Being important because of the kind of influence you have. Every human being has a deep longing within themselves to, um, to have a level of influence. It makes us feel good from the time that we, are, we were children when we did activities and, and we, 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 we had victory over some things that we did. We really felt good in our hearts. It feels good when, when you call a team and you're doing something and, and you're able to organize and, and, and there's, a, there's an achievement ahead. So it feels good when, when we have a level of influence and, and it boosts our self-esteem. It makes us uh, feel better. So it brings a high sense of satisfaction when we are able to achieve a few things. The challenges that come in when someone does not understand how significant they are act or act so carelessly are many. There are many challenges that come when you do not understand how significant you are or act out carelessly when you're living here on earth. It is very important to understand that we have a divine assignment. There is something that God has put within us that when we come together, when we as individuals execute that assignment well, there is a sense of, of, of joy even in the heavens. Case in study, we have Samson whose hair was cut off and later found himself in a predicament that costed him a lot till his death. So Samson had a divine assignment. And in his walk here on earth, he failed to understand that his assignment needed to be carried out with a lot of care and not carelessness. And it costed him a lot. On the other hand, we have Nehemiah who understood his assignment and he was able to do an amazing job of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. There were so many challenges, but he stayed on focus. Being sig significant takes a personal initiative. Samson's parent brought him up well. They ensured they followed the instructions they were given. However, we see Samson at one point being careless and this was brought to an end. The question is, are you aware that you are significant? Because sometimes we act out carelessly or we are not really intentional about our significance because we are not aware about it. Are we aware about our, our assignments? The God-given assignments. God created us in his own image. He created the male and female on the sixth day. And we can see that he's telling Adam that he needs to cultivate the land. He needs to guard this land. And for Eve, she was called upon to be a helper. So there was a specific role. Each one of us, uh, one of them was given. But in the end, we see Adam and Eve um, sinning against God. And they are chased away of the, out of the Garden of Eden. And again, again, their relationship had, had, had challenges and there was turmoil. And, and now Jesus had to come and restore us back to God. Because with our own strength, we could not do it. It is very important that we understand who we are. The Bible brings out different amazing people whose lives have inspired us, motivated us, challenged us in the way they lived and walked in obedience to Christ. Their resilience, their assertiveness, their humility, their reverence for God was just amazing. Hence the victories in their lives. Noah did his role, irrespective of the fact that people, um, some people didn't believe him. 
he still went ahead and today we can still talk about the Noah who built an ark. He never wavered. He did um, as he was instructed. He constructed the ark as he was instructed. And he never wavered in that. And so we understand that when we are here on earth, when it's good to be able to focus on our divine assignment. As we pursue our significance, as we pursue our level, uh, to pursue to influence in the positive, as we pursue to do that which we've been called to do, whether it is in the lives of our children or even in our workplaces or in this nation, we need also to be aware that we have an enemy. In John 10.10, 10, the Bible talks about the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says this, I came that you may have life and have it in abundance. So the enemy, Satan, looks forward to destroying us. He looks forward to a time where he will bring us down. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He found Samson when he was not very much aware, when he was in his comfort zone and lured him through an enemy and he brought him down. We too need to understand that the enemy is looking for us to devour us. And so we need to embrace Christ so that he may continue to encourage us. We need to continue praying. We need to continue reading the word of God. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us in everything we do so that we may have that level of influence that we desire to the glory and honor of his name. The Bible talks about that we have been set free and he who the sun sets free is free indeed. We are no longer slaves to fear because we are children of God. When we look at our divine assignment, narrowing it down there, it is good to look at he who came and never wavered in every way or in any way. And that was Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 6 verse 38, this is Jesus saying that for I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. When I was looking at this scripture, the Lord was impressing in my heart and so many questions came to my heart that do I really understand why God brought me here on earth? Do I really understand why, uh, what assignment I have? Because there's that one core thing that God brought you down here for. And so Jesus understood that he is coming down only for, for a certain purpose. And he's not going to act in his will. He's going to work in the, in, um, act in the will of his father. In 1 John 5 verse 12, the Bible talks about he who has the son, he who has the son does not um, has life and he who does not have the son does not have life. How do we attain this life? Jesus came down to restore us back to God. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. And so he knew that he has an assignment. He didn't come to do other things. He just didn't come to look around. He just didn't come to lazy around. He didn't come just to enjoy um, a time down here on earth. He had a divine assignment. And one thing that we bless the Lord, that when you go through the word of God, he came and accomplished that purpose. And he did it well. And in this Easter season, this time where we are celebrating the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we do so because he conquered death. He conquered sin while he was still here on earth. And at the cross he said, it is finished. 
how I long for a day that Jehovah God will uh, walk uh, with us or will allow ourselves, I will allow myself that I will do that which I've been called to do. And at the end of the day, I'll be able to say, it is finished. I have run the race. I have fought my battles and I have won and it is finished. The Bible talks about David resting, having accomplished the purposes of God in his generation. So we have a divine assignment and we need to continually, consistently con uh, focus and fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, so that he may continue revealing what we need to do, what we ought to be doing at every minute, every second, through what we say, through what we do to the glory and honor of his name. And when we finish our work down here on earth, the Bible has said that he's coming soon, bringing a reward to repay all people according to their deeds. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So for us to do um, the will of God, we need to walk um, in the ways of the Lord. We need to continue to consistently fellowship with the Lord. As the body of Christ, we, only, we, um, we always desire uh, so that we always desire to do the will of the Father. And so we continually um, 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 invest in prayer, worship, reading the word, so that we, as the body of Christ, the bride of Jesus, he may continue to sanctify us through and through and finally attain the measure and the standard of Christ. There are some things that deter us from living fully to our assignments. And one of them is temptations. Jesus was tempted. Immediately, he was baptized. He went to the wilderness. Actually, the Bible says the spirit of the Lord led him to the wilderness. And he was tempted three times. But the beautiful thing is that he overcame temptation. In John 5, 19, as we say, that I tell you the truth, the Son of God can do nothing by himself. He does only what he says the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. So we find ourselves that we need to continually uh, fix our eyes on Jesus so that we do that which is in the will of God. That which glorifies God. Because the temptations will come the our way. Temptations will come to bring us down. The other thing that we look at is that fear can creep in when we are busy trying to do that which God created us for. And Jeremiah was there and he was fearful. He felt young. But God assured him that he had appointed him for a certain purpose. He knew him even before he was conceived in his mother's womb. And he appointed him to uproot and destroy. To stand up against nations. And also to build and to plant. So Jeremiah's way of line, his assignment will, would have come with a few things where he needed to uproot, destroy. He would stand up against nations. He would be able to say no to this thing and no to that thing. There are places he would build, he would plant. His course was outlined. And God, he himself, the author and finisher of our faith, the creator of the universe, he who created him in his own likeness, he who created Jeremiah fearfully and wonderfully made, assured him, that he would be with him. Assured him that he needed not to fear. We too need to get assured. Could you be there and you're very fearful of a few things that you encounter. A few things that you feel. If I start this, how will it end? How will my life be? 
Will I have enemies? God is assuring you today that he will be with you at all times. And the assignment that is within you, he is going to walk with you until a time we will say it is finished. We also see that sin can deter us from living a life of influence. The Bible talks about so many things that we need to get rid of. So many things that we need to let go. When we came to Christ, we got a new um, identity. And in Ephesians, I want us to look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 32. The Bible talks about us living as children of the light. Sin too can make us not um, live significantly or have influence in the areas that we are in. There are so many places we find ourselves in from Monday to Saturday. How influential are we? Is there sin in your life that makes you sometimes um, not live to the fullest? Listen to what the word of God says in Ephesians 4, <clears throat> 17, all through to 32. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do. For they are hopeless, confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. And with that, we get to see that when we harden our hearts, when we close our, our minds from having what the Lord is trying to stream in, we will not live a life, a life of, uh, of, of influence. We will not be able to, to, um, to leave our assignment as God desires. Jesus himself said he cannot do anything. That is not in the will of his father. He does only what the father does. So we are being told that we need not to live hopelessly, confused, hardening our hearts. No. And he continues to say, they have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. Imagine. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. You find that the world we are in today, there's a lot of lusts. The spirit of lust is everywhere. And if you are not aware, you will walk in the spirit of lust. And you will not accomplish your God-given assignment. Jesus was not lustful. He was told by the enemy that he needed to change the bread, the, the stones into bread. But he said, and quoted the word of God, that man cannot live on bread alone, but that which comes from the mouth of God. And so we understand that the Bible is very clear that there are things that we need to get rid of. In verse 20 says, but is but that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off the sinful nature and your former way of, lay, of life, which is corrupted by the lust of deception. So we see Jeremiah, he's fearful, he's assured, so he needs to get rid of that fear. We too, there are things that we used to do before we knew Christ. There are things we, need, we, we, we used to say before we need Christ. We need to get rid of all that. Because when we are in Christ, the new has come and the old has gone. The other thing he says is that in verse 23, Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on the new nature created to be like God. 
truly righteous and holy. And so we desire, and, and I pray that it be the sincere desire of our hearts, that we desire to put on and to renew our thoughts and the attitudes we have. Ata nikifanya, you know? Sometimes we want to do something because we want people to see. We want to do something so that we can please people. Sometimes because you want to enjoy your comfort zone. You don't want to go to that extra mile. To go and witness. You do not want to show that God can, can, can use you in an amazing way. When it comes even to sharing the gospel. There are people even who do not know you are born again. Those attitudes, we need to get rid of them if we need to walk a life of influence. Stop telling lies. Tell us how the neighbors... Um, let us tell our neighbors the truth for we are all parts of the same body. Verse 26, And don't sin letting anger control you. Do not let the sun set while you're still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. So it is important to understand that some things that deter us are sin. And these are, this is what in Ephesians, uh, Paul is calling out even lies. He says anger. Anger gives foothold to the enemy. And with the anger, you can imagine when you're around angry, you, an angry person, you just want to be away. If you're that person who holds anger and you do things, people won't be around there. People want to be away from you. And also in your anger, there are times you find yourself sinning. Jesus is calling us today. If we need to live a life of influence, we need to get rid of anger. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, for good hard work. And then give generously to, the, to others who I need. So you stop stealing. We hear corruption every day. We hear people stealing from each other. How do you live a life of influence? How do you become influential if you're stealing from other people? The, the much you can do is just please yourself. But from the heavens, you will not get God's reward. You will not get blessings. If you are, do not use full abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing you that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Some versions in verse 13, the Bible version says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit by the way you live. Do not use abusive and full language if you want to be influential. And this kind of influence we're saying, the God-given assignment that God has put in you needs to come into place, needs to be activated. But for it to be activated and to, to, to be able to be used fully or to work out fully, we need to get rid of some of these things. And finally, the Bible says, get rid of bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all types of behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. So we are better together when we all of us are making effort to get rid of that which does not bring glory and honor to God's name. And we are able to embrace the tender heartedness, the forgiving spirit, the taking care of each other. You know, loving each other just as the Lord has loved us. Just as the Lord has forgiven us, we learn to forgive each other. Now, so we've talked about temptations, we've talked about fear, we've talked about sin. And lastly, I want to talk about identity when it comes to the things that deter us from leaving our assignment. When we talk about identity, we talk about a sense of self-worth. 
that you feel you are worthy and we can see that currently people are really working hard to understand who they are to have that sense of worth and we are doing so many other things so that we can feel that we have a sense of worth that i am worthy we have seminars here and there people talking about self awareness so that someone is aware of themselves and they can be able to feel, um, live their life to the fullest so that they can feel worthy and enjoy life while they are still here on earth so when we were growing up we had many different ways of describing ourselves and still today we still do however we need to understand that our bringing plays a very big role in in them um, um plays a very big and major role in how we answer the question who am i and in this identity bit i would like to look at tim keller one of the scholars and and he he talks widely about uh, identity and and he measures um his talks on two um major cultural ways on how we were groomed and he talks about um the traditional culture the traditional traditionalism culture and then there is the modern western culture the different cultures we grew up with also play, uh, play a very big role in in how we answer this question who am i because if you do not know who you are then it will be very hard to live a significant life it will be very hard for you to live fully to the glory and honor of your holy name while you're still on here on earth to be able to accomplish your purpose here on earth when people are creating things a car was created to drive us around to for transportation we have plates plates are for serving food spoons are for eating chairs are to be sat on and i believe when human beings are creating things and making them have purpose they just follow just who god is and even us when we were created we have a purpose specific purpose it was not a wholesome thing yes we may have the unity of doing one major role like witnessing but there is a way that what is in thee you is executed differently from the other person some will be singers others will be actors others will be pastors others will be uh, evangelists others will be you know prophets and so we look at the modern western culture and traditionalism and a bit of the difference so we when he is explaining about the traditionalism traditionalism is where you grow up in a setup where you feel a sense of worth based on what other people say and in this case and uh, we look at people in your family people in your in your um community in the society what do people say about you and so you work so hard that whatever you the way you live your life is in a way that the community around you the people the your family members um can be able to say wow yes that is good and when they acknowledge that you feel a sense of worth and this kind of a person will will be introducing themselves yes in a family setup i am a son i am a daughter i am a father i am a mother you know and 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 when people see you take up these roles confidently of sonship of of being daughters and being fathers then you are told well done keep it up that's the way to go but in on the other hand when we took a look at the modern western culture you get a sense of worth by looking inside of you it is not about what the society says or even your family it is not what other people are talking no it is about your dreams your feelings eh then you 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 encourage to unfold them and how you express themselves brings a self of worth so the expo- uh, the person will express themselves irrespective of what the family 
thinks or the society says. One does not care what other people think because you've been encouraged. It is about you. Look inside you. So the sense of worth is coming from inside you to out. And when people see you expressing themselves, many will say, wow, you know, oh, you can do that. You can do this. But both of them have their own disadvantages, major disadvantages. When we talk about traditionalism, it can be suffocating because you're working so hard to please other people. It is about what other people say. And on this other end, it becomes a challenge because some things that you express cannot be um, validated. They are not stable. Some of them are incoherent. They are confusing and unclear. Yeah? Because my feelings say, or I'm feeling like this, then you act out the way your feelings are. So if you feel like hitting someone, you just hit them. Because you, you, you felt it. And nobody can pin you down, so you defend. The other thing is that they can be unstable. The modern Western culture is unstable in so many ways. Because when we talk about you defining your self-worth based on how you are from within, the way you are 15 years ago, it's not when you are 15 years, it's not the way you are, you'll talk about yourself when you're 30. Neither is it the way you'll talk about when you're 50 or 70. So your identity is coming from within you, but when it's based on this, it is unstable. It cannot be trusted. It is also an illusion. It, it has so many ways that it is not true. My inner feelings. So uh, you have so many feelings you'll, and you get to choose one of those feelings. And those feelings that you choose end up being what defines your identity. So you find that there is a lot of individualism when it comes to... Um, modern western culture and also it, it's also a huge pressure to because today you're trying to do this another time you're trying to do this to achieve that which you feel will bring a sense of self-worth within you and finally it is excluding because you are acting out based on your achievements so it is very easy to feel that you are so you you are so and so is not as hardworking as you are, or as smarter as you are, or better as you are. And so you exclude so many people. And with this kind of a setup, we find that we cannot rely fully on the way we grew up. We cannot rely fully on the things that we feel from the inside. So if someone today decides, I feel, my feelings are telling me that I'm attracted to the same gender, then the society just allows you. Because this person has been allowed to express themselves based on how he feels, not who they are. Not the identity that God gave them. And remember, it is not about even what the society or the family says. They just do what they want. But for us as the children of God, we have a different narrative. Our identity, it can only be found in God, the creator of our being. He is the one who created us. Jesus was very particular that I have come from heaven to do the will of my father. Not my will, not the will of the society, not what the nation says, not what the community says. I have come to do the will of my father. And so we see that when Jesus comes to our lives, when we give our lives to Christ, he gives us an identity. One, he says that I am a good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. 
He is there. He has called us as his sheep. And he has not left us alone. He is our shepherd. Secondly, he is telling us that he has adopted us. We've been adopted into sonship. We are co-heirs with Christ. We are united with Christ. We belong to the family of God. We are citizens of heaven. This is our identity as children of God. And so we need to make Jesus at the top of all form of identities so that we can reign on earth and be significant. We need to pride ourselves in the words and the way Jesus has outlined it for us in his word. During baptism, God said that this is my son with whom I am well pleased. God loves us so much. God has a God has a purpose for all of us. And we need to continually seek his face to find out what assignment we have. David conquered because he knew his God. It's not about his family, it's not what his brother said. That what are you doing here? He went ahead and did what he needed to do. Some of us have battles that we need to fight so that a whole nation may be saved. It is our season to arise and shine and let our light shine in these dark times. And also it is our time to also let our children and train our children find their identity in Christ. When we are growing up, we are not taught on how to find our identity in Christ. It is more of what does mom say? What does dad say? What does the society say? What did teachers say? But we need to go to the other level where we train our children to find the will of God while they, were still, while they are still young. As I finish, I want to mention this. We are not saved by what the way we behave, we are saved by what we believe. We do not try to become what we already are. There is already that which you are. So stop trying to be it. Just release yourself to God so that he may help you to live it to the fullest. He may empower you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph knew his identity. And even when Potiphar's, came, uh, Potiphar's wife came, he was able to say that, yes, I've been given, I've been told to be in charge of all these other things, but not you. And when, he, when, when she approached him, he said that this is a wicked thing and a sin against God. Do we know our identity? Are we able to tell the difference between a wicked thing and sin against God. Are we able to overcome temptations? We are better together when everybody understands their role and their significance. We are better together when you understand that whatever you do, it should not just be, your career should just not be a means to progress, but a vocation also. That you can use your career to fulfill the Great Commission to go ye and make disciples of all nations. Our God loves us. He has equipped us with every good gift that we need. That we may live our life to the fullest. And when we live our assignment, when we do our assignment, then we will have that sense of self-worth. And we will be joyous. And one day, when we rest, we will be like David, who rested, having accomplished his purposes in his generation. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, your care, your protection. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for reminding us that we have an assignment here on earth. We thank you, Lord, that, be, that you have reminded us that we are significant. Help us as we move the next step that we will continue to affirm ourselves and confirm and, and, and confess in our hearts that I am significant I am a child of God 
And I thank you, Lord, because your word in Matthew assures us that you shall be with us till the end of age. And in the times we are in, there are so many challenges that are there, but we pray, God, that you make a way where there seems to be nowhere, where we have sinned against you, God, where we have not um, fulfilled our purpose or lived our assignment, we ask for forgiveness. Lord, we release our hearts to you that you may continue to minister to us. We love you, we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord do as well. May the Lord continue to empower us in every way. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We thank God for his word. God bless you, Anne, for Karanja, for just allowing God to use you so powerfully. And uh, we've come to another part of a service where we get to give of our gifts, our tithes and offering to the Lord as we become partners in the kingdom and continually become partners in the kingdom of God. So I request us to pray. Uh, the numbers that we will use will be on our screen. So let's believe and just give thanks for uh, the offering. Lord, we thank you and we honor you for another opportunity, Lord, to partner with your kingdom, O oh God, to be partakers of this great commission. We thank you, God, for the blessings that you have bestowed and uh, you have put in our hands, O oh God, and trusted us. And Lord, your word says that if we are, can be entrusted with little, Lord, you will also trust us with more. So Father, we thank you and we honor you. So as we stretch forth our hands, O oh God, to give, may you be glorified and may you be lifted. And may the same measure be poured that, that, that is running over uh, and filled to the brim be poured even onto our bosom. Lord, we thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. We pray and we give thanks. Amen and amen. And then as, as we uh, give cheerfully unto the Lord, we want to worship the Lord with this beautiful song uh, of our worship unto our God and we pray it will be a blessing to you.
so good more than I can explain. You have blessed me, you have blessed me more than I dreamed of. You've been so good more than I can explain. You have blessed me more than I dreamed of. You've been so good more than I can explain. You have blessed me. You've been so good, more than I can explain. You are faithful, you are good. You are faithful, you are good. We testify. You are faithful, you are good. Yes, Lord. You are faithful, you are good. This is all you are. You are faithful. Amen and amen. We declare that our God is faithful and he is good. And you know his mercies and his goodness is forever. It's not measured, you know, and we are, we are partakers of his goodness. So God bless you so much uh, even as we continue uh, and start a new week. May the Lord just shower his goodness and his mercy upon your life. And may the Lord Almighty see you in every situation in your life. God bless you.